Chris Ford of Maximum Ames Records. We're here working on letter pressing the cover art to the Poison Control Center as a nice old fashioned romance with love lyrics and everything, which is coming out on January 10th of 2012. Recently, we had our friend Mark Hogan sit down with Patrick Tate Fleming of the Poison Control Center to talk about the history of the album and why they made it. Pat, tell me about how this lost album came about. Well, when I moved to Ames in 1999, uh, I moved to Ames to be in a band called Pookie Bloom, and uh, I didn't write songs for Pookie Bloom or anything. And when I was in high school, I always wanted to start a band with all my friends, even if they weren't like musically inclined. Or uh, so I guess my goal was to start a band that had a bunch of people who were musically inclined, and then a bunch of people who just had a bunch of heart, because uh, I think those, they're equal when you're in a band. And some people have heart and are musically inclined, and those are the of uh, the the true uh, lifers, I guess. And uh, luckily we had a couple of those, and then we had a lot of people with heart. And um, I pretty much just asked, I pretty much just started recording songs in my basement. So how many people, I mean, do you know? Like, I mean, do you have a, a, t a total head count of how many people were involved on, on the uh, record? Over or? 20. Over 20 people are on of the rock opera, I guess <laughs> it can be called, uh, or the attempted rock opera. Um, and... You know, a lot of them continued to be in the band. The uh, Poise Control Center didn't, didn't technically play their first show until uh, October 28th of 2000. And uh, I'm happy to say that, you know, Joe, Terry, and Devin Frank were at that first show and uh, had, have played 99% of them since. Uh, so there's three of us who are there from the beginning, and I would say those two are two of the people who had talent and heart, I guess. Um, but yeah, it was just uh, over 20 for sure. It was kind of like one of those things where I would like start a song. Uh, the majority of the songs aren't like uh, played as like a full band. There's a few on there, uh, but the majority of the songs like I would start and I would play drums and guitar and, and stuff like that. And then when my friends would just come over to hang out, I'd be like, hey, uh, can you come downstairs? I have this new song. I'd like you to put something on it. And, and I had the power, I guess, to like delete it if I wanted to. It was awesome. Uh, uh, because they would never know. They were just like coming over to like hang out. And uh, but most of the time, I never really deleted anything until I just deleted all of it and never never put it out. Yeah, I never. I, yeah, all the tracks were thrown away and and stuff like that. So what you hear on this record is what uh, it was in the mix, the most m recent mix of whatever it was at that moment. So it was, it was kind of like uh, it was kind of like Beach Boys Smile. It was your, your kind of lost album. You decided not to put it out, but now you've yeah. Kind of Except they were good, and, and we had never put anything out yet. Uh, yeah, like I guess like it got to the point where um, it wasn't really a real band at the time when we were recording this stuff. So there was like no pressure. Nobody knew what they were doing, like, like, uh, didn't know how to record or like any of that stuff. It was purely like, here's a project of that was very influenced by two other albums, 69 Love Songs and Cleaning Girl Wonders, Pony Oak. Uh, and just to, like focus on like a particular subject and write as many songs about it and then get all my friends to play on it. And, uh, you know, coming from Northwest Iowa, small town, I hadn't really lived that many life experiences. So pretty much when I decided, like, oh, I want to do this, I just kind of picked the first subject that came about. And uh, I met a girl in Chicago at the pavement show. Her name is Bethany. She was the same age as I. And um, I was just like, there's a subject. It's an easy subject in the sense that um, I have no sort of correlation or relation to this person. Uh, uh, she can be my friend and not, like, and I can like ask questions and 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 pretty much try to not to in a sense like be obsessed with her story, <laughs> I guess, and then and her life, and then it wouldn't really like it's not like it's a friend of mine or anything like no harm no foul kind of thing, but I can like use this as like a platform, I guess, of uh, to start this project. So that's what started it. I guess. When you're 18 or 19, you just don't know about other people, I guess, and you don't know other, but you only know like your life and like your friend's life. And I probably had like a crazy family, so somebody probably like, in a sense, could have written some really crazy shit about my family or something. Uh, and so like when I just started asking her about her family, it was just like, oh, my mom's really religious, 
and my dad's a train conductor, and my mom teaches French, and my brother's been like in and out of jail. But I, you know, like I just started asking her questions like over email. So she just like writing lengths about stuff like, oh, I, some of my favorite memories of like being with my brother are playing like broom ball with him. And so like that shows up in a song or like uh, she wrote about a story about her um, getting her tongue pierced and her religious mom being really upset about it. So then that, sh that shows up in a song. Some people probably thought I was like obsessed with her or something like that, but it, w <laughs> but it wasn't really like that at all. Like, and I think and there's a couple songs that probably show that, that it was more just like a, a hopefully trying to like tell a love story of somebody who was already in love with somebody else or like and it ends up being like a love story about what the guy has already like what he really just wants is his band to like have their fans back the auspicious beginning of the Pussy Control Center your very first song for the band right it was um, on this album it's called My Hand Smells Like Breast yeah uh, My Hand Smells Like Breast I wrote when I was 17 I was in a car with Jed Zwagerman, who was in my high school band, who uh, the album touches on. Uh, that actually becomes like a central character of the album, The Canadian Wheat Lords. Uh, but I had a date with this girl named Kate Hartzell, and Jed asked how the date went, and I said, well, my hand smells like breast. Uh, but it really smelled like bullshit, because yeah. that was, was a 17-year-old kid trying to be cooler than he actually was. Uh, but then the song came about, and uh, somebody told me once, while I was like 16 or 17, while the Canadian Wheelers was going, that like you always have to put pop references into your songs because because <laughs> people will know, people will relate to them more. So at that time, in when I wrote that song, it was like 1997. Uh, so at that time, like the the biggest 1997 or 1998, and the, the biggest pop culture reference things for me were of, and in Sibley, Iowa, were of email and Gavin Rosdale, and they just happened to rhyme. So that was <laughs> the first lines of the Poison Control Center ever has, I got email from Gavin Rosdale. I got email from Gavin Rosdale, the lead singer. 